quickly review who is in Colorado's delegation. We send seven representatives to the U.S. Congress. We got two senators and we got seven representatives. And these are the people that's going to be important for the national conversation. It is going to be a bloodbath for re Republicans. Look at the Alabama race, right? Fuck you, Roy Moore, and the horse you rode in on, and fuck your mother and the horse she rode in on. The Roy Moore uh, race just shows that there's weakness with the Republican Party. We can turn this shit around. In Alabama, they love their fucking communist, you know, socialist, progressive, liberal haters. The people that hate the left, they love those people, but they went ahead and voted for the other guy. Doug Lamborn, or not Lamborn, that's from the 5th District. Whoever that guy is in uh, Alabama. So, who are the seven representatives here in Colorado's 1st District? You have Diana DeGette. She's been a Democratic representative of Denver since 1997. She's been in there for 20 years. Now, she is safely Democratic. So, that's one seat that the Democrats have for Colorado. Now let's take a look at the rest of this. In the second district, you have Jared Polis, who's been in there for the last nine years. He's running for governor, so Jared Polis is going to be stepping down. But as of right now, we have three Democrats and four Republicans. The other Democrat is Ed Perlmutter of Colorado's seventh district. So Ed Perlmutter has been in there since you know the last eleven years. And then Mike Kaufman of the 6th District, Doug Lamborn of the 5th District, Ken Buck of the 4th District, and then Scott Tipton of the 3rd District. That rounds up all seven of Colorado's delegation, the U.S. representatives that we send to Congress. Jump, even though it's going to be a bloodbath for Republicans all across the United States, I don't exactly see the same trends happening here in Colorado. We have countercurrents, there's strong conservatives and strong progressive views. And then really most of the state don't even pay attention to politics and don't even vote. So the uh, non-voters would be your biggest demographic. So four Republicans, three Democrats, two, Repub two Democrats are stepping down. We only have one guaranteed Democrat. I'm going to assume these other Republican assholes are going to run for re-election. So that means there's already four incumbents running for their same position. They have a 95% chance of winning. And then out of the three Democrats, seats, two of them are stepping down, and we only got Diana get. So at least we'll probably get one Democrat out of the seven, but there's two that's open seats that's in jeopardy, and I don't know if there's any good challengers for these Republican candidates. The scales are already tipped in the favor of the Republicans. The Republicans in the United States were expecting a Republican bloodbath. In Colorado, it's looking like it's going to be a Democratic bloodbath. So the Democrats are definitely the underdog, which maybe they can make the, they have to make the most of that. Now, the other thing I want to mention, even though I'm not using pictures, there's one picture. The only person, if you're out of Pueblo, which is my geopolitical, so if you're from Pueblo, Scott R. Tipton is your representative. Out of all those seven people, you know, the national conversation, I'm going to pay attention to all seven of them and then elevate the progressives and, you know, shit on all the fucking fascist, uh, anti-revolutionary, regressive pieces of shit, right? No, I don't want any pieces of shit in U.S. Congress. So Scott R. Tipton is the only person you need to know if you're from Pueblo. But for the national, more time, you have Diana DeGette, Jared Polis, Scott Tipton, Ken Buck, Doug Lamborn, Mike Kaufman, and Ed Perlmutter. Those are the seven U.S. representatives that we still have. Even though Jared Polis and Ed Perlmutter is going to step down, they're still voting in Congress today. Ed Perlmutter was going to run for uh, governor, then he stepped down, and then he stepped down from his House representative seat. So what's going on with that? So, you know, Democrats are already out for the count, and the few Democrats, I bet you Diana DeGette is big on Hillary Clinton. So the few Democrats that are left around here are for the war, right? She's a war hawk. She was for... Uh, borders, strong borders. She was for Trump walls. She was against marijuana. She was for Goldman Sachs. She's for regime change. So she's a war hawk. She's a right wing one percenter war hawk. So that means there's no progressives anywhere. So those are the seven. Now, Tulsi Gabbard, she had proposed this. It turns out, and this is remarkable, but the United States was financing ISIS in the fight against Syria. So we want world hegemony. We want 
the petrodollar. We want a bunch of things, right? So we're an empire. We control 150 different countries. We have military bases. We're a fucking empire. We're a goddamn empire. Just that's what we are. And empire doesn't help me. Let's protect us, protect our borders. We're going to sit there and pay for hospitals and schools all over the world. Make sure Israel's got universal health care. Make sure they got free college in Israel. And make sure Germany's got protection, military protection, when they provide free college. And yet we don't have free college or health care here. That's because America, the government, doesn't give a shit about you. I mean, those are your bread and butter issues. Jobs, health care, education. What else is there? You're against my fucking education. You're against my health care. If we all had good health care, that increases our freedom. We're more free. Not for sure if Bernie Sanders is going to run for 2020. He is pretty old. I would vote for Bernie Sanders again. I would also vote for Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard is the only young Bernie Sanders on the horizon that looks like she has a chance and she's a progressive, right? So she's got that, she's a senator. She's a representative from Hawaii. So she's already, you know, she's already won an election. She's got uh, electoral that, you know, sort of, uh, uh, whatever, mystical sort of, you know, she won an election, so that's, you had JFK become senator and then became president two years later. Obama did a uh, very similar shit, so Tulsi Gabbard would be a great fucking president. Here's one of the best reasons to vote for her. She introduced this bill, and it's House Bill 608, so House uh, HR 608, which is the Stop Arming Terrorist Act. Empire. Now, on 9-11, we were told that Al-Qaeda attacked us, so why are we giving weapons to Al-Qaeda in Syria to fight against uh, Assad? The enemy of our enemy is our friend, but we're in a war on terror. The whole point is a war on fucking terror. So if we're going after states, then we're not going after terrorism. We're going after, you know, the state has a monopoly of fucking violence, and that's how, you know, the nation-state theory has been operating for quite some time. So, Tulsi Gabbard, you would think it's obvious, you would think that this is common sense, stop arming terrorists. So, out of all seven of the Colorado delegation, how many of them do you think voted to stop arming terrorists, right? You think it's obvious, let's not arm terrorism. If we're giving guns to ISIS and Al-Qaeda and our fight against Assad, maybe this thing is just so fucked up, we just need to back off and Two other related bills, there's uh, H.R. 258, and then there's Senate 532. And the Senate bill 532 is identical to, you know, the uh, bill in the House. And so who's all on the Senate bill? You don't have many people. You have zero co-sponsors for this Senate bill. At one point, Rand Paul, he was a sponsor, so only Rand Paul out of all the senators, wants to stop arming terrorists. Now, let's take a look at all the people. You had 14 co-sponsors of the Stop, Ter stop Arming Terrorist Act. So Tulsi Gabbard is against arming terrorists. You have Peter Welch, Thomas Massey, Barbara Lee, Walter Jones, Thomas Garrett. They're against arming terrorists. We're, uh, arming terrorists, arming ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Are you all paying attention? These neat names, you got D. Fazio, Peter A. DeFazio, Jeff Duncan, Bobby Rush, so Illinois, South Carolina, Oregon, Rokana, Dana Rura, Balker, John Conyers, Scott Perry, Paul Gassar, Ted Yoho, Thomas Garrett, Walter Jones. I'm not seeing anybody from Colorado. Barbara Lee, Thomas Massey, you got a Republican from Kentucky who signed on to it, Walter Jones, another Republican, Thomas Garrett, another Republican, Ted Yahoo, Yahoo, another Republican, Paul Gassar, Scott Perry. It almost looks like you got more Republicans who want to stop arming terrorists. Dana Rural Balker, and then Jeff Duncan. So, you know, uh, are you in favor of arming terrorists? Well, if you ask Colorado's delegation, Diana DeGette, Jared Polis, Scott Tipton, Ken Buck, Doug Lamborn, Mike Kaufman, and Ned Perlmutter, say yes. Let's keep arming that I'll throw out is that Jared Polis, I'd asked him this question, and he said he worked with T Tulsi Gabbard on a lot of issues and that he was opposed to it. So he asked, you know, good questions about it. He was also in favor of national universal health care for Colorado. If the federal government drops the ball on this, Colorado is going to get our own health care. We got the marijuana money. Let's put it towards our health. 
the only caveat he had said on that, though, was that in order for Colorado to get universal health care, we've got to get the amendment passed, and that amendment failed, you know, overwhelmingly in 2016. But that's, Jared Polis said that he was opposed to arming terrorists out loud. He said those things, but he didn't go and get any co-sponsored legislation. He didn't sign on to the Stop Terrorist Act of Tulsi Gabbards. So who's in favor of arming terrorists? All seven of Colorado's delegation, including Polis. He didn't sign on.